Um, we did DHI testing last night and this morning. I guess between the two milkings, she gave about 55 pounds. So she's got a good start. We just need her to keep it up longer than she normally does, if you catch my breath. Here is Esther. I wish I could remember exactly what she's doing. I'm sure she's doing as much as Minnie. Um, and that's actually on three quarters. This fourth quarter back here on the left, uh, we actually quarter milk that because that's typically a high somatic cell quarter that we don't want influencing our bulk take sample. So Esther is doing well too. We wish we could get that quarter to clear up. Um, I think it's one of these cycling things where sometimes it's high and sometimes it's not and there's just no way to really predict when we could keep her in. So at least right now we're keeping that quarter out. suddenly dawned on me that I was talking about somatic cell count and some of you may not understand or know what that is. Um, so I'm going to read you some of the official Wikipedia page that talks about somatic cell count and then I'll just talk about it a little bit. A somatic cell count is a cell count of somatic cells in a fluid specimen, usually milk, in dairying the somatic cell count, or SCC, is an indicator of the quality of milk, specifically its low likeliness to contain harmful bacteria and thus its high food safety. Um, the, the SCC, well, let me back up, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to read it all because it's not all necessary to read, but. The number of somatic cells increases in response to pathogenic bacteria, okay, like a staph infection, which is a cause of mastitis. Okay, so the higher your somatic cell count, the more likelihood that the cow is fighting some sort of mastitis infection, some sort of bacteria. The SCC is quantified as cells per milliliter. General agreement rests on a reference range of less than 100,000 cells per milliliter for uninfected cows and greater than 250,000 for cows infected with significant pathogen levels. Okay, uh, and then one other thing here, the somatic cell count in the milk also increases after calving when colostrum is produced. And that's another reason why you don't throw a fresh cow's milk into the tank right away is because of the higher somatic cell. All right, I'm gonna go down just a little bit. Um, the DHI testing that we did last night and this, and this morning, um, this is from a paper called Guidelines for Using the DHI Somatic Cell Count Program. Okay, so let me just give you a couple bullet points. The results of many studies suggest that cows with SCC of less than 200,000 are not likely to be infected with major mastitis pathogens, but cows with SCC above 300,000 are probably infected. So, well, let me read one more thing, um, just because it's, it's better for me to read it than to try to sit here and think about how to explain it. Um, in Canada, European Union, Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, and some U.S. states, the somatic cell count should not be more than 400,000 cells per milliliter. The somatic cell count limit is 750,000 in the majority of the USA and 1 million in Brazil. Now, our dairy, 
expects us on a what they call a three month rolling average okay meaning uh, right now in July so they're looking at July June and May um, they don't want our somatic cell average to be higher than 400,000 and one of the big reasons for that is because we export to the European Union and the European Union does not want milk greater than 400,000 somatic cell count. So anyway, I just wanted to explain that a little bit. I was using that terminology again for those of you who do not know what that is. Uh, that gives a little bit of an explanation. It is the biggest reason why we have started testing once a month um, to watch who is giving us trouble with the somatic cell count. Every other day when our milk is picked up, the milkman draws a sample and from that sample they look for several different things. One of them is the somatic cell count of the bulk tank and we get the results of those samples uh, usually a day later. Um, so we can kind of watch to see how the somatic cell is doing but we do not have an individual tester here at home where if suddenly we've got a high somatic cell count that we can go through and take samples from suspect cows and put them into that tester. Now Keith's cousin Brian has one and sometimes we will take samples to them but it does cost four dollars a sample so and I'm sorry for the noise in the background that's the acid wash in the pipeline so I thought maybe we were all done and wouldn't have that. All right, so I hope that's helpful to try to explain the somatic cell, why we have to watch for it, why we have to test for it, um, why if we have a cow that has a known quarter that's high, we will try to quarter milk it, um, at least the ones that are too, too high that are gonna seriously influence our bulk take sample. And in the case of Esther, um, we wonder if, I mentioned how it seems to kind of cycle. Sometimes she can have a very low somatic cell count and then that quarter will blow up with something. And we had a vet many years ago who ended up leaving the practice to work for the state. Um, and she explained to us that sometimes a cow in that quarter that's infected will actually wall off the infection. And so it's actually very difficult to treat to get any sort of antibiotic to it to kill the infection because the the cow has actually walled it off um, and that would make sense with Esther in particular why sometimes she has no active infection and then all of a sudden it will blow up it's like she just lets that thing open up and releases it and then she walls it off again so um, anyway just some thoughts about somatic cell hope you find it somewhat interesting it's something that we have to pay attention to and um, in the case of our dairy, if you have three three-month averages in a row consecutively that are over that 400,000, it's called degradation. And basically, they say we don't want to purchase your milk anymore. Find some other outlet. So it's something we have to we have to track and be careful with. So anyway, thanks so much. If you're still with me, thanks for listening. Thank you for watching. Uh, we hope you all have a very good evening. It's a beautiful evening here after a few nights of storms and some really high heat and humidity. It really just cleared off beautifully and uh, it's, it's a beautiful evening. So again, thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Take care.